Billie Eilish, teenage pop sensation, first musician born in this century to get a number one single, the female artist to log the second most Hot 100 songs at one time, and ASMR icon? Yep, one look at YouTube will tell you just how popular Billie is in the ASMR community. The platform is full of ASMR-inspired covers or whisper tributes of her music. There's a reason Billie's a favorite of the ASMR crowd. Her music uses key principles of ASMR to redefine the sound of pop, and that's the secret to why she's the industry's fastest rising superstar. Sorry, sorry. ASMR is short for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. The brain tingles people feel around the head and spine in response to certain triggers. Some of the most common triggers are whispering, a deep stretch, let's breathe in and out, rhythmic sounds and movements, and crisp, amplified acoustics. Plastic, yeah. You can also find these elements in Billy's music. Walking wearing feathers, Peter should know better. So you're a tough guy, like a really rough guy, just can't get enough guy. Don't ask questions, you don't wanna know. In Barry, a friend, she definitely, like, she, the voice quality is what sticks out to me. Um, you know, she's saying, like, I wanna end me. It's like almost like a whisper and it, it gives you like it gives you the chills this is gb who the new york times described as the lebron james of touching stuff she's an asmr creator with over 2 million subscribers on her youtube channel and like many asmr artists she's also a big billy fan in march when the singer dropped her debut lp when we all fall asleep where do we go her label reached out to gb and commissioned her to do an asmr read through of billy's album It sounds like she is right up on the mic and just like barely letting the sound out. And it, she sounds gorgeous. That hush, tingly whisper quality of Billy's voice. Don't you know too much already? It's supposed to sound like that. According to Billy's sound mixer, when it comes to her vocals, everything is close mic'd and whispered. The goal, he says, is to always have Billy's vocals sound super present. It's as if she's right there, murmuring directly into your ear. Another thing Billy seems to share with ASM artists is a passion for Foley sound. To produce a range of different sounds for their followers, ASMR creators borrow a lot of techniques from Foley artists, the people that recreate everyday sound effects for movies and TV. Similarly, Billy and her brother slash producer, Phineas, DIY a lot of the sound effects they use in her songs. The metallic scraping sound that marks the upbeat of You Should See Me in a Crown. That's a recording of Phineas sharpening a knife. And the horror movie sound of a whizzing drill in Bury a Friend. Security, keep in my head. Billy captured that on her phone at a dentist appointment. <sighs> to some people, the sounds of a dentist office might seem more nightmarish than relaxing. But dentist role plays are actually very common in ASMR. Are the ear and so are many types of drilling sounds, from dental drills to power drills. Then there's the intro to Billy's album, which opens with a surprisingly loud and slightly gross recording of Billy sucking the saliva out of her Invisalign. Those kinds of wet, slurpy mouth sounds will be familiar to any fans of the video genre mukbang, which means broadcast eating in Korean. Mm. There's a major ASMR component to mukbang videos, as they often involve a lot of very loud slurping, which some ASMR fans find hypnotic. Whether mouth noises are your thing, or you like to stick with paper crinkling and finger tapping, chances are you're listening to ASMR through headphones if you want to get the optimal effect. And the same goes for Billy's music. 
The singer's been called the first pop star made for AirPods. When you do listen to Billie Eilish with headphones, you can hear all of the, the instruments and the beats and everything sounds like its own individual thing. And I can totally see where that is similar to the sounds or like the layered um, sort of technique that a lot of ASM artists use um, when they find a pleasant sound. So like, you know, if it's something like her snapping or just like a really simple beat. Crisp sounds, which are among the most common ASMR triggers, are also a key part of Billy's production. The clean bass and minimal percussion that form the skeleton of her beats leave plenty of space for her unusual sounds and samples. Take the song Bad Guy, for example. Where you'd usually have a snare drum keeping the song's pulse, they're just soft yet super amplified finger snaps. There are also strategic gaps of silence to emphasize the weirdest moments in the song. Like at the end of the chorus, when Billy's voice suddenly breaks up into a million little pieces, making it sound like she's croaking into a fan. I'm the bad guy. You can catch all of the tiny sounds and noises, so it feels extremely immersive compared to other music that maybe is like a little more flat. I feel like Billy's music is extremely 3D. A big reason Billy's music sounds so three-dimensional is that her mixes are specially crafted to dance from one of your ears to the other. When her voice splits up into two or three tracks, it sounds like you have a different Billy in each ear. Pearly gates look more like a picket fence. Once you get inside, I've got friends but can't invite them. Hills burn in California, my turn to ignore ya. In the final riff of Bad Guy, you'll notice her <laughs> bouncing from left to right in your headphones. This is what's known in ASMR as the stereo effect or binaural effect. Binaural meaning two ears. ASM artists use special techniques to produce this effect for their listeners. You are using a microphone that can track your movements, or in my case, I would use two microphones. I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the mall situation. Where I grew If I get closer to the right one, you hear it more in your right ear. Closer to the left, you hear it in your left ear. And it really helps with immersion and making everything sound more intimate, like you're right there. And the, the music or the sounds of the ASMR is happening around you. So Billy takes a page out of the ASMR playbook by trying to simulate the acoustics of a 3D environment in her music. And this makes listening to her a full sensory experience, which at times can get pretty intense. In Zanny, she has a, the ear-to-ear -ear movements. If you're wearing headphones, it sounds like she's going back and forth. I don't need a Zanny. Which is really interesting because it's sort of, uh, it's paired with like the distortion in the same song, which is like actually like mildly like uncomfortable to listen to. It's probably because her voice often sounds like it's encircling you. Many people find watching ASMR videos unsettling at first for the very same reason. It sometimes feels like the person in the video is physically in the room with you. But that intense intimacy might be the secret behind the power of both ASMR and Billy's music. ASMR is thought to be related to a phenomenon called frisson, named after the French word for shiver. Often, frisson is most closely associated with music. Music-induced frisson refers to the pleasurable chills that some people may experience while listening to a song, like the goosebumps or shivers that Billy fans often describe getting from her music. The most well-developed theory about music-induced frisson comes from a music cognitive psychologist named David Huron. This theory states that frisson is actually related to fear. According to this theory, when a song contains a surprising element of some kind, like a sharp and unusual sound effect, Step on the glass, staple your tongue, uh, bury a friend. Or a voice that suddenly sounds like it's jumping around in space. Don't give me a Zanny now. 
that provokes an instinctual fear response in your brain. This defensive reflex is so short-lived, it probably won't reach consciousness, because in short, the rational part of your brain recognizes there's no threat and quickly inhibits your fear center. That's when you'd feel the tingles. It's the suppression of your fear that's so pleasurable. Okay, so what does this have to do with ASMR and with Billy's music? Well, because ASMR closely resembles frisson, some scientists believe it might be set off the same way, but with a different initial fear cue. One possibility is that what brings the tingles when you're watching an ASMR video is the perception of physical closeness with the person creating the sounds. Because of the acoustic techniques that many ASMR creators use and the feeling of intimacy that they cultivate, it can feel at times like they're entering your personal space, something that makes humans and most animals go into high alert. Billy's vocals and soundscapes create the same unnerving sense of closeness. I'm drinking you down like I wanna jump, like I wanna end me. Step on the glass, staple your tongue. Uh. Essentially, her music is designed to make your brain and body react. It combines the musical cues that are linked to Frisson with the physical cues that may well be linked to ASMR. There are a lot of unexpected musical events in Billy's songs. The startling sound effects, and new vocal harmonies that seem to come out of nowhere. Then there's all the sonic trickery that makes her voice sound like it's moving around spatially, sometimes even approaching or surrounding you. It creates that illusion of proximity, the almost too close for comfort feeling that you'd get from an ASMR video. Billie Eilish combines all of these techniques to make some of the most spine-tingling music to ever hit mainstream. And if her smash debut is any indication, this tingly sound just might be the future of pop.